So this is the second part of the verifying trigonometric identities videos. And, you know, I'm just going to do a couple, this is going to be a short one, I'm just going to do a couple examples. And uh, I want you guys to keep trying this out. Um, you know, there's this section, you know, the first video covered up to number 44, and so 45 to 56 is essentially the same. Uh, they just want you to confirm it by graphing, and so what that means is graph both sides of the equation that they give you after you've manipulated it down and show that they are the same. Well, uh, before, I'm sorry, you should do it before you manipulate it down, I guess would be the best. You know, just put in whatever they have on the left-hand side and put in whatever they have on the right-hand side, and then you should get the exact same graph. And so uh, there's really not that much difference. Again, you know, got to keep trying things. You're not always going to get it right on the first try. Um, the next section has to do with logarithm properties and so here's your logarithm properties again and um, so you're just going to kind of play around with those I will say that you want to remember that an exponent of negative 1 flips the fraction around like that and um, I guess another thing would be that you know this statement can be written as division or it could be plus a negative, and then you could have this situation also. So um, I don't want to do any of those because I'll just give it away. I want you guys to think about this. And if you forget your properties of logarithms, this is a good time to get a little refresher. Um, and, uh, you know, the next section also is another one I just want you guys to try, see what you can come up with. Um, and so then I am going to do uh, one of the problems from the 65 to 68 using the co-function identities and uh, that'll be all I do and the rest uh, I'll just wait and see if you guys have any questions over. So here's number 68 and you know they're telling us in the directions that we've got to use the co-function identities so I would take a look at those um, and then the other thing that you'd want to kind of pay attention to is that we do have a bunch of squares and I told you pretty much every time you get a square, you should kind of think about the uh, Pythagorean identities also. And then if you take a look at both of those together, you know, you know that the Pythagorean identity with sine has to do with cosine. Uh, so sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And, you know, the way that's written is like this. Sign in the book they use u. Oops. Um, but in but I want to point out what that means, right? This is the the one that they're, that I'm talking about. They use u, but the important part about this statement is that both of them have the same angle. Okay, and so if both of these angles are true, and you have a sine squared and a cosine squared, then it will add up to one. So it doesn't matter what these angles are as long as they're the same. Um, and then if you notice the co-function identities involving sine and cosine um, start with sine and end with cosine. And so, you know, that's going to be something to keep in mind. And then I'll also point out before I get going here that these two angles here add up to 90 degrees. And then these two add up to 90 degrees as well. And um, that's nice because the co-function identities are involving pi over 2 in the book or 90 degrees. So we're going to use all of that to put together to kind of manipulate this through. Um, and so I'm going to do two different ones. Um, firstly, I'm going to rewrite this so that the... Um, the complementary angles are next to each other. And then I'm going to apply, well, I'm going to show you one more thing. Um, also, what you want to do is keep in mind that sine squared of 12 degrees is the same as sine of 12 degrees squared. Um, and then I'm not going to change this one at all. I'm going to leave this one alone. And then I'll change this one back to sine of 40 degrees squared. So, 
You know, hopefully you remember that. Um, and I, the reason I rewrote that is because the cofunction identities are not in squared terms. Uh, they are just sine and cosine. So now we can just mess around with this inside thing, but keeping the value the same. So I can rewrite this statement as sine of 90 degrees minus 12, uh, I'm sorry, minus 78 degrees, right? You would say that's 12, so I'm not changing anything. I'm just rewriting it in a different form. I'm not going to change this one. And now I'm going to write the second one as sine of 90 degrees minus 50. Again, I'm not changing anything, any value. I'm just rewriting it in a different form. And so now we're going to apply the cofunction identity to just the ones I changed. So according to the cofunction identity of sine, sine of 90 minus 78 is really just the cosine of 78. And of course this is still squared. And then the sine of 90 degrees minus 50 degrees is just the cosine of 50 degrees, still squared. And so now what we have is, and I guess I'll rewrite these, well it doesn't really matter, you guys can figure it out, right? So this is really cosine of squared of 78 plus sine squared of 78 plus cosine squared of 50 plus sine squared of 50. And now we're going back to that first statement I said about the Pythagorean identities that as long as these angles are the same, these two statements will add up to be 1. And these two statements will add up to be 1, again, because of the um, Pythagorean identities. And so then that's 2. So uh, I didn't want to go over that one. Other than that, I think you guys uh, can, uh, everything else should be something that you can think through. Uh, if not, please ask and let me know what I can do to help.